Um, next up we have Talia Laban. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be this many people here for the job interview. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Talia. Uh, I, I, I'm a Harvard class of 2012. Uh, I didn't get a chance to send you my resume ahead of time, so uh, I'll just uh, read it and talk to you about it a little. I really hope you consider me for this position. Sorry, this is, uh, this is one of my first interviews. Uh, <clears throat> some of my campus activities. I was, uh, I was voted 110th most popular leader of leaders by the Harvard Leader Leadership Society. <laughs> uh, I am a senior synergist for the Harvard Synergy Club. Some of our mottos are, synergy is the new synergy, synergy is the new black, black is the new synergy. Synergy may not be black, but we really like hip hop music. <laughs> so it's really not that big a deal if Synergy quotes the Notorious B.I.G. You should really just take it as a joke, which it would be if you had a sense of humor, like Synergy does. <laughs> that February should be Synergy History Month anyway. <laughs> Why are we even having this discussion? It's really messing with our Synergy. Synergy is really just sin energy, maybe. Uh, and finally, Synergy. Uh, I, I've also done some work as a managerial consultant for iHeart Consulting. Uh, the consultants for consultants. <laughs> Consult us about your consulting. Uh, my Patronus is a reindeer. <laughs> uh, some of my skills, uh, I'm fluent in C++, Python, Aramaic, Zulu, and several space languages. <laughs> I am a, I'm a porn connoisseur. Uh, so I have watched so much porn. I can make porn videos uh, and, and, and match them with, sorry, I can match porn videos with appropriate wines from different regions of France. Uh, I, I, am a, I am a repository of TV trivia. I love watching TV. I'd be happy to talk about it with you guys. Uh, I love reality TV too. Um, that's actually my favorite genre. Um, I love that there are so many more midgets in reality TV than there are in real life. Uh, it really seems like there are actually midget versions of most regular TV shows. Um, Extreme Home Makeover, Midget Home Edition is only 20 minutes. Uh, or what not to wear if you're a midget? Well, a lot. Uh, yeah, um, one thing I can bring to your company is I'm really discerning. I have great intuition. You know, you can really learn a lot about someone just from looking at their online dating profile. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I also make and consume great Mexican food. Um, and I, I spend a lot of time at, at Taco Bell. Um, but the other day I was there uh, getting a burrito and uh, they said they couldn't make it for me uh, because they had a problem with their meat pump. Um, I thought that was... Horrifying, because <clears throat> the only the only kind of meat pump I want in my taco is a fully functional meat pump. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm just really really good at telling Jew jokes. <laughs> um, I think I learned it from my family. I have like a wonderful, just colorful, extended Jewish family, like um like my uncle. Uncle Heidi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's great. He's, he's still single, still living with my grandma, but, uh, you know, he's, he's really, he has, he's so cool. He's actually written a list of pickup lines for the entire Jewish calendar. Uh, like, uh, you know, like Passover. Hey, baby, why is this knife different from all other knives? That's why I mean, sex on it. <laughs> or, uh, Monica, Monica, um, hey baby, you wanna spin my dreidel? If you land on your back, I win! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I just, you know, I'm feeling, I'm really feeling the vibe, I just feel a rapport, I, I realize this is getting a little informal, so I'm gonna talk about my work experience. Um, so, 22 years ago, I was born. Um, this is actually a lot more of a qualification if you think about it. In order to be here, I had to emerge from a gaping, heaving vagina and figure out how to configure my, my tender mouth and 
my recently formed nose and my raw pink lungs into the complex mechanical dance that is breathing. Moreover, despite having my body nearly crushed to pieces by the engorged and pulsating birth canal, I learned to defecate just instants after emerging from the womb. <laughs> Within just a few more instants, I was able to make a coordinated movement with my tiny, tiny limbs, and that movement was a sweeping gesture with my arms. An unwitting embrace of the new, surprising world I found myself so hairlessly in. Uh, one that smelled faintly of disinfectant blood and the shit that both my mother and I had released during the preceding moments of trauma. My, my emotional cords were, were fully formed by literally five minutes after my birth. Once they cleared all the gunk out of my various passageways, as I, I heralded my own arrival into the world with a series of lusty screams, as if to announce to the unspeaking collective of humanity, I am here! I am here and ready to take on the mantle that you have provided me, my ancestors! In short, my birth was a miracle, and I would say it's one of my top qualifications for this job. <laughs> Uh, I also worked briefly on an ad campaign for Dove for Men. Um, you know, I, I asked myself, why are men's colognes always named for something that doesn't smell like anything? Uh, power, steel, obsession, male, eternity, escape by Armani. What is escape supposed to smell like? In my case, it would smell like fear pee. <laughs> also, ask from running. <laughs> and, you know, and they sell these things, perfumes and deodorants to men in these really weird ways. Like, naked women are going to fall on top of you if you wear this. Like, they might literally fall out of the sky and land on your erect crotch. <laughs> in, in fact, it's, it's a fucking guarantee if you slather this on your man hide. What is a man hide? You want to see that bad? Men have skin. Just like women, they want it to be soft and buttery, like a slip and slide, a baby's torso. They want their ass to be supple and clean. And men of the world, I'm here to tell you that that's okay. <laughs> what I really brought to the table at Dove for Men during my time there was a sense of honesty. I said, let's make an ad campaign that tells the truth about why men wear deodorant. They want to satisfy the pre one of the prerequisites for maybe someday impressing a woman. They, they, they know that no one's going to tell you if you're that guy, the one that makes you want to claw at the windows. Uh, some respite from the BO. Uh, they're maybe interested in something that smells a little better than their own sweat. And uh, most importantly of all, deodorant is an excuse not to take a shower. And that's something we can all agree on. Uh, and so I, I guess I'm re reaching the end of my resume. So um, I, I guess I wanted to share the final section, which is things I have accomplished in my dreams. Uh, <laughs> I can fall great distances unscathed while naked. Uh, I have mind synced on more than one occasion with my dragon alter ego, Senor. Uh, I, I have bathed in liquid gold, unscalded. I, I was a raven that could speak to humans, but I felt like I was too good for that. <laughs> um, I have had a series of erotic encounters with Ron Paul <laughs> in spring 2009, uh, mostly after drinking a bunch of wine before bed. He is a surprisingly gentle lover, though a little frail, uh, and you have to be willing to talk a lot about the gold standard before making love. <laughs> On the same note, I had a three-way with Rick Santorum. I think that you could say I have connections. Uh, and that's one of the many reasons I hope that you consider me for this position. Thanks. Bye.